On the 14th day of October, Halloween gave to me 14 logs a bouncing, 13 planes exploding, 12 zombie soldiers, 11 angels wrestling, 10 ghostly hitchhikers, 9 basement clowns, 8 vampire cruises, 7 silent heroes, 6 prequel bloodstones, 5 diabolical fledglings, 4 vampire pianists, 3 dead professors, 2 Michelle actresses, and a radu drooling something bloody. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another 31 Days of Halloween. It is day 14, it's a beautiful Saturday here at Dark Parade HQ. I would like to say I really did all of this Final Destination stuff just to talk about this movie. We are talking about Final Destination 2 today. It is easily the high water mark of the series as far as I'm concerned, and maybe, just maybe, one of the greatest films ever made. I love Final Destination 2 so much, and it. one of the things I wanted to talk about yesterday, but I didn't want to get into it without having this as a reference point, is that Final Destination is a real classy kind of movie, in the sense that it is trying to be an honest-to-goodness movie. Final Destination 2 makes the very quick pivot to, we know why you're here. We know why you have come to this movie, and it is to see people die in strange and unusual ways and to kind of tease you with the method of their death. And it has the greatest setup for the deaths. It has some of the greatest deaths in the series. It is just logical enough to hang your hat on, even though it's very silly and, and still doesn't always make a ton of sense, but what, what are you going to do? And it's got some of the best characters in the series. And I love this movie so much. I could watch it just about any time. I think Final Destination 2 is a genuine treat. And here is my explanation of why. <laughs> Hello, my name is Bo. I'm a Final Destination 2-aholic. And here is my story. So, to begin with, it's got your typical group of teenagers as led by... Uh, A.J. Cook, who, if you are a Criminal Minds fan, you know her from that series. She is one of the agents on that show. And and that, I think, is... I, I probably saw this before I saw any Criminal Minds stuff. But I remember when I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, from Final Destination 2. Uh, death is, is coming for her, but it's the death of her career. I mean, what am I saying? Criminal Minds ran for you know, 110 years and everybody on that show is wealthy beyond their wallet dreams as a result of it. So, you know, I'm just poking fun. It's parody. Allegedly. Anyway, they're going on, uh, some kind of trip. Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter who or with how, um, what happens though is there is a premonition. AJ cook has a premonition of this logging truck losing some of its logs that go bouncing down the highway. One of them smashes into a police car, which <laughs> it just drives a, a log through the police car. And one of the things I like about this movie, and, and this isn't the goriest of them, I don't think, but it's pretty gory. And you see chunks Oh, the police officer flying out the back of this car as the log proceeds through it. Oh, mm, chef's kiss. Mwah. And, and then it's just mayhem, right? It's cars flipping over, catching on fire. Uh, there's a, a motorcyclist who, you know, lands safe, like skids off his motorcycle and lands safely only for his motorcycle to smash into him and murder him. It's just, you know, cars flipping over and exploding and other cars ramming into other cars. And it's incredible. Some of the stunt work in this is phenomenal. There is probably some CGI. If I went back and looked at it again, I could probably point out where it is. But I don't care. The, old, the overall effect, there are lots of practical stunts. There's some CGI to sweeten it all up. That's fine. That's how CGI ought to be used. Most of this movie is practical stuff. And as a result, it just sings, baby. It sings. 
<laughs> and uh, so this whole introduction, like I've talked to a number of people that remember this setup, this whole log truck. And to this day, if I am behind a log truck on the interstate, I, I get out from behind it. It's like fucking Jaws where it's like, hey, I don't go swimming in the ocean because of Jaws. Actually, I do. But I don't go <laughs> swimming in the ocean because of Jaws was a cultural phenomenon. And I have run into people who, when I discuss this movie with them, are like, oh, yeah, 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 I don't, I'm, if I'm behind a log truck, I get out of the way, I saw Final Destination too. I know how this shit goes down. Them logs can go right through <laughs> the car and, and leave chunks of you know, on the other side of it. So that is fantastic. It's, it's a, an incredible setup. My favorite of the series by far. And then, of course, A.J. Cook wakes up and is like, oh, my God. All of this is going to happen. You know, we're gonna all going to die today. So she makes everybody, like, they're on the on-ramp to this interstate. And she makes everybody get up and holds everybody up. And, of course, uh, you know, the, the cop, our cop character in the movie comes over and is like, what's going on here, ma'am? And, uh, you know, she's trying to explain that she's had this vision. And then, sure enough, it comes to pass, right? Like, the, once again... There is this incredible accident. Uh, A.J. Cook has managed to save the lives of a bunch of people. And that's great. Good for her, right? But, of course, that is not the end of it. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a similar situation as we had in the original Final Destination, where now Death feels cheated and is going to come for them. The first example of this is... A guy who has just won the lottery and goes to his apartment. And this is where the movie introduces the Rube Goldberg nature of the deaths in the film. Where he, uh, like, part of his apartment catches fire. One, one little detail I really like is that a bunch of old girlfriends are calling him up. and are like, hey, I heard you won the lottery. It's been a while since we talked, but would you like to go out sometime? little sexist, but I find it funny. And then uh, he gets his hand stuck in a garbage disposal, and there's a fire starting, and all of this stuff, and you're like, man, like, the question isn't, is he going to die? The question is, which of these crazy-ass things going horribly wrong is going to kill him? You know, where's the misdirection? And he ends up freeing himself, and getting out of his apartment, which is on fire through the fire escape, takes it down, ends up falling, and the ladder slams down and stops inches away from his face. And he's like, whew, I almost got killed by a ladder in a freak accident. And then the ladder releases and punches through his skull, killing him. And this is the point where A.J. Cook, when she gets word that this guy has been murdered, is like, Wait a second. I bet we're final destination. And ends up um you know trying to contact everyone and being like, "Hey, we're all going to be murdered horribly uh and I'm having visions of how people are going to die and you need to listen to me." And there's another great death with uh a mother and her kid who are uh the next to go and the kid is going to the dentist and you're like, Oh shit, this is, this is going to go bad. AJ cook, by the way, has this, uh, li like vision of birds and she's like, Oh, birds are going to kill him. And he goes to this dentist office. That's in a high rise and some birds are banging into the window and you're like, ah, oh, that's how it's going to happen. Like something's going to happen where one of the birds bangs into the window and you know, shit goes wrong. And he's given some gas, his mouth is pried open, and there's like a mobile of fish above his head, and a plastic fish drops into his throat. And he's choking to death, but the dentist comes in and catches it just in time, and you're like, ah, oh, curses, death has been thwarted, uh, this, you know, plastic fish is not going to be the thing that gets our, our kid. Then they go outside where A.J. Cook and Michael Landis, uh, who's playing the cop, are like, hey, you're going to die, you guys. We need to tell you something. There, there, it has something to do with pigeons. And this kid, 
just sees a flock of pigeons on the ground and runs after them, sending them all up flying. And this leads to uh, a series of events above him where some workers who are like pulling uh, by a crane this giant window up the side of, of the skyscraper, it releases and this kid gets fucking flattened by this giant pane of glass. Again, a really gruesome effect where you see this kid just come apart as the the pane of glass hits him. It's wonderful. And of course, everybody, you know, freaks out. At this point, AJ Cook is like, I've heard of this. The, like, we're all being Final Destination. We need to go find Clear Rivers, a.k.a. Allie Larder from the first movie. And... There's all like, and Allie Larder has kind of checked herself into the the giggle factory because this is a safe place. Like it's padded walls. She insists that nobody comes in with anything sharp. Like if death is gonna come find her, it's gonna have to get through security. And uh, so uh, AJ Cook goes to meet her, and Allie Larder is like, "Oh, you're fucked." If death wants to, he, what I would recommend is that you check yourself into a room next door to me. And then that's how you live your life. And AJ Cook very wisely makes the point like, well, you're just hiding from life. You're, you know, yes, you're alive, but what kind of existence is this? And Allie Larder is like, yeah, maybe you got a point, but doesn't immediately commit to helping her. AJ Cook takes off again. And uh, also that this time it's happening in reverse order. And they also track down... Um, Mr. Bloodworth, played by the incredible Tony Todd, as usual. And while they're there, he's like, oh, well, new life can... De a life that was not supposed to be can interrupt Death's plan. That's how you can circumvent this. And they remember, oh, there was this woman who was pregnant, and she was a part of the vision. And if we can keep her alive long enough to have this baby, then that resets Death's plan, and we're all off the hook. Which is great. And so the the cop is like, okay, well, I'll put out an APB for her and I'll make sure that she stays safe. Everybody has a meeting at uh, an apartment to talk about, you know, here's what we're going to do. The mother of the kid who got smushed is like, I don't give a fuck about any of this. My husband is dead. My kid is dead. If something happens to me, it happens to me. I'm not sticking around. And meanwhile... Isabella, who is the woman who was uh, uh, having the baby, um, she gets pulled in by police and taken in for questioning or holding or whatever. So there's uh, the mother ends up dying. The mother of the kid who is dead ends up dying because of a crazy elevator accident where a guy with a bunch of prosthetic hook hands catches on her uh, ponytail and and when the elevator door opens and she tries to get out, the elevator doors close, the elevator starts to rise, and her head uh, literally gets taken off, which is also pretty good. Uh, our survivors then all jump in an SUV, and they're like, we've got to get this woman who is pregnant uh, to deliver this baby so that we're all off the hook again. Which leads to, you know, kind of the centerpiece scene where they get end up going off the road and there's just a crazy series of deaths here one where um, a log goes through the side of the SUV as they're spinning out a woman who is in the front seat um, is trying to be free like they've got the jaws of life out but it sets off the airbag which thrusts her head back into a pipe that punctures the back of her skull. Uh, my personal favorite is a kid who uh, was going to be killed. Like there's a, a cokehead kind of asshole in the movie who saves a kid who was about to be uh, blown or about to be run over, which sits in a, a chain of events in, in sequence and uh, initiates this chain of events that ends up with a car exploding and sending a barbed wire fence flying through the air, which effectively cuts him in three parts. And there's a great moment where 
he is sliced in thirds and his arm just falls off because, you know, there's nothing to hold it up anymore. And then he just kind of slides apart. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, it's it's not a great visual effect at this point. You know, time has moved on and, and visual effects are better. But eh, that's what it is. It's fantastic. There's explosions. People are dying all over the place. Uh, you know, it's just the best. And then uh, AJ Cook has a, a final vision where she's like, oh, there's this nurse named Kalarjan who is going to end up killing Isabella. So we got to go get her. So the, it's her, uh, Clear Rivers, the, the cop going to the hospital. Oh, also there was a dude who uh, had a punctured lung and he's in the hospital also. And they, they get there in time to see that Isabella has delivered her baby. And they're like, great, this is all over with. And then AJ Cook is like, wait a second. In my vision, the original vision with the, the log truck, nobody actually saw Isabella die. I think she was always going to survive, which means we're not off the hook yet. Cut to Clear Rivers going in the hospital room of the guy who got a punctured lung. And sure enough, some oxygen has been leaking and a spark goes off because there's water dripping onto an electrical socket, which happens a ton in these movies. There's always water dripping on some kind of electrical something or other. And that blows up the room, which kills the guy inside. And also Clear Rivers, who gets burned to a fucking cinder in a really gruesome moment. So Allie Larder is now out of the series. Then uh, AJ Cook and the cop who are the last two left aj cook is like oh new life has to interrupt death so i know what i've got to do so she steals an ambulance and drives into a fucking lake nearby where she drowns to death and then wakes up because she's like oh uh new life you know i was supposed to die or i did die for a second and they brought me back and so we've interrupted death's plan so the end of this movie is her, her new boyfriend, the, the young cop are hanging out at, uh, her dad's place and they're having a big barbecue. And as they're, <laughs> as they're like talking about how, oh, we interrupted death and we, uh, you know, managed to escape and all that stuff. They also say like, oh yeah, uh, Brian, our kid over here, he was almost hit by this news van the day uh, of the accident, but of course, you know, Roy, the cokehead who later got, you know, parted in three pieces, saved him. And AJ Cook and the cop are like, oh shit, he cheated death. Meanwhile, Brian is going over to get <laughs> some food off the grill, which fucking explodes. The last scene of this movie, the last shot of this movie, is his now <laughs> barbecued arm. Falling in the middle of the table as everybody screams. Cut to credits. One of the greatest movies of all time. It is full of gruesome deaths. And and that's why we're here. Like, it sounds morbid. But, you know, horror movies are a morbid fascination. There's something about death that we're all fascinated by. And this movie cuts the shit and gets right to it. Which is like, hey, we you are here to see a crazy way that you could die. And there's no way to not think as you're watching this movie about like, oh, that'd be a terrible way to go. Ah, that wouldn't be so bad. You know, it, it's confronting death in a real way, but doing it with this really dark sense of humor about it of like, yeah, this would be fucked up, right? Imagine if you went out like this. That's kind of the game of this movie, but it knows what it is. It knows how to have fun with the premise. It's gruesome. It makes just enough sense to get the action from, you know, point A to B to C. And I love it. Like, the acting is good enough. Everything about it is good enough. And then you have the overarching sense of dark glee at putting this nonsense murder on screen. And it's one of those things that's hard to explain to somebody that's not a horror fan. Be, it, it's sort of like, like it, you know, th this is where the series turns into a slasher film because that's what it is. Only you don't have a Jason or a Michael Myers. You have pure death stalking and killing these people. And that's what it is. It's the same appeal 
of a slasher movie. And I am not crazy about slasher movies as a rule, but there's something about the Final Destination series where I kind of embrace it. I really do love the the silliness of it and the the glee that it's having. It, it you know it's the same reason I love Friday the Thirteenth Four. It knows what movie it is and it's having fun with that premise, and that's exactly what's happening here. And I adore it. I wish more movies were like this. Uh, and to that end, we're going to be talking about Final Destination 3, 4, and 5. I've, you know, kind of given up the ghost by saying this is my favorite of the series, but that don't mean that I don't enjoy other stuff in the series. We're going to have a good time with this because I also said, I think this is one of the best horror franchises around. Is it the best? Maybe outside of Evil Dead. Evil Dead may be the best. The more I think about it, the, that's probably the correct answer. Final Destination is a second place finisher for me because every movie has something to recommend it. And part of the thing that recommends it is the level to which it has fun with killing its victims. And this one is the one that sets the template. It's the Friday the 13th 2 to Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th is a more legitimate movie. Friday the 13th 2 is like, well, we're just going to do this slasher thing. And here's the formula. And Final Destination 2 is like, hey, we're a slasher movie also, and here's the formula that we are now going to follow. You've got your setup, which was the same thing as Final Destination, but we don't have to figure a bunch of shit out because you know that as the audience, you know the premise. So the characters just have to catch up to the audience, which doesn't take very long, and then you're off to the races. How do we keep these people alive? What kind of crazy ass thing is going to murder them? While, <laughs> while we're trying to keep them alive. So we'll get into more of this later. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie. I think it's great. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, we'll get to the, the rest of the series over the next couple of days. So if you haven't seen it in a while, watch Final Destination 2. Final Destination 2, great fucking movie. Uh, all right. As always, thank you so much for joining me on the 31 Days of Halloween Celebration. I'm having a great time, as I hope you can hear. This is a blast. I love this time of year. I love the fact that I'm watching a bunch of movies that I either enjoy or I haven't seen. Or, you know, there's some reason to get excited about seeing them. Uh, it's great. And I hope you are having a good time as well. In the meantime, have yourselves an amazing Saturday. And I will see you tomorrow for Final Destination 3 and yet another entry in the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then. Halloween.